Yes. So welcome everyone to the Psalms through the eyes of the living letters. Today we're going to be going over Psalms chapter 22. And the beginning of the Psalms here begins with a statement that, that we all know very, very well. Because Yeshua said this on the cross right just a little bit before his death. Because he began to see, to, to, to look around and, and realize that in the place where yeah, Yeshua had taken on all sin upon himself, even though he himself knew no sin, in that place, you know, even throughout scripture, it says that, that or through the New Testament, it, it alludes to the fact that, that because of the sin on his son, the father turned his back. But there was a lot more to the story than what was currently going on. And of course, as Yeshua died and then went down into hell, because he was taken there illegally with the sin of the world on his shoulders, then he was able to take the keys of sin, hell, and the grave away and then bring them back and to set the, captive, the captives free in that place. And so there's a beautiful expression of this, but De, you know, Yeshua during that time cried out the same, the same, uh, the same word. Today I've, I'm just in in a, a very focused place today. So uh, just bear with me as we walk through this. As as I as I I'm, I'm hearing the Father in the cry of, of things that are going on. We. Many of us have been through really tough situations over the last several years with the, the things that have been going on where we look around and we see a lot of despair, a lot of, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt, and a lot of things that are going on. And at the same time, where I know for me, and I know for you guys as well, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm sensing this, this place of the Father giving me a rest and a peace in the middle of that. And so there's a part of me that rejoices and thanks the Father. Thank you, Father, for this place of peace and for joy and for rest that you're giving in the middle of, of all these things that are going on. But yet at the same time, there's a part of me that's crying out for my brothers and my sisters who are still dealing with things. Now, I have a tendency, I'm one who, who that, that, I was in the medical field for 22 years. And part of the reason I went into the medical field is that I loved being able to help other people. I loved being able to, to step in and to be there and to, 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 to be able to assist and not have to worry about all the other junk. In other words, I could get right up in the middle of people's junk and still love them through that. And that's just, that's always been the expression of my heart. You know, uh, even though my job didn't have me, I was a registered respiratory therapist, even though my job didn't always have me in situations uh, where this was necessary, but I worked at a couple of smaller hospitals and, and there were times that not only did I do my own job, but then there were times that I would go in and assist the nurses. And that would include things from taking care of wiping the bottom of a, of a patient, you know, and, and, and assisting with that, that process and that sort of thing. And, and, you know, and so when you're starting to get into dealing with people's junk, you know, and then including, including that, that part of it, you know, there's, there's a place of love that, that is necessary. And I know that the father gave that to me. And I didn't even think, I don't even think twice about it. Matter of fact, I don't hardly ever even talk about it very often because that was just an expression of the father's love through me. And so I'm, I'm, there's a part of me today that is really focused on this just because of the things that are currently going on in the world right now. And, and it just seems like there's such a, such a, uh, a lot of people are going through a lot of heaviness. But I want to start this off. Psalms chapter 22 starts off this. For the conductor on the Ayelet Hashakar. Now, when you go through scripture, I want to remind you of one thing. There is not one jot or tittle, not, not, there is not one letter that is, it is there by accident. Every single jot, every single tittle, every single letter, every single word 
every single sentence and so on all has meaning every single part of it and so many times that, that from the, at least the western mindset that we we've looked in scripture and we've we've kind of skimmed over the uh many of the things that we thought were just nothing you know like in this case for the conductor on the ayalet uh hashakar it's talking about the instrument itself that was used to play this on but there's more but there's more you see the hebrew hebrew word ayalet or ayal is actually the hebrew word for deer d-e-e-r or it can also be seen as the Hebrew word for strength. Now, hashakar uh, can actually have, have a couple of, of different meanings. And really, one of the meanings of that is radiant. So when it talks about this, even though it's mentioning the fact that it's an instrument, it's talking about the people of Israel being a radiant deer. The Hebrew word shakar is the word for radiant, or one of the words for radiant, all right? Hashakar, or shakar. So the truth is, is that we can, we can look at this as it being, as it, uh, as it applying to the place of a radiant deer. Well, the moment that, that, that I see that word radiant deer, I initially go to another scripture that we all know very, very, very well. Psalms chapter 42 and verse 1. Let me go there. As the deer longs for the brooks of water, so my soul longs for you. Oh God, my soul, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. So as the deer pants for the water, I mean, it's a song we used to sing years and years and years ago. And I remember it, uh, I remember it well, you know, and it was a beautiful song. There was a, there was even, even on the frequency and the sound of the song that we used to sing back then, it, there was this drawing inside of you that initially came just as though, as we began to sing the words, as well as the music that went along with it. And I didn't realize how much so until now beginning to see that in Psalms chapter 22, the very beginning of this opens up with this place of the deer, the radiant deer, the radiant deer, the one who is longing for its mate, the one that is longing for that place of connection. Now, I'm going to add one other little mystery to this, because in the Hebrew word ayelet, there's a dagish inside of the yod. Now, dagish is inside of letters. In some cases, can refer to the way that a Hebrew word is is pronounced. Like with a vav, then then it may have an uh, an u sound to it if it, the dagish is in the middle of the letter. But in other times, that dagish is also a place of instead of having to write the same letter twice. They've shortened it by putting a dagish in there, indicating that it is a double letter. So the Hebrew pronunciation of the of deer there is a yelet, ay, so it's got the yod in it, yelet. And so there's a double yod hidden inside of this. Anytime you see a double yod in scripture or a dagish inside of a yod like this, and it refers to the place of, of that being a double letter, the double yod always represents Yahweh, always represents the Father, always. So hidden inside of this Hebrew word for deer here is the fact that it also is representing the Father. Now, with that in mind, we can, the Father has given us the ability, because no matter how we see things, Everything speaks, now, 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 I know you probably caught what I just said, no matter how we see things, Yahweh will always bring us back to that place of representing him as we're seeing him. So in other words, that, that a Hebrew word, and you guys have heard me say this before, a Hebrew word can have a meaning, but remember, don't stick with just that meaning. A Hebrew word is a picture, so it's more than just a uh, a, a, a particular thing like our, our word for deer is just means just that it's a deer period 
there's there's no meanings beyond it. But when we talk about the 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 Hebrew word for deer here, it can be an instrument, or it could be a deer, or it could be several other things because it represents a picture, or even better yet, a deep concept. So based on the fact that the, that the word ayelet there has the double yod in there. Let's take a look at Psalms 42 from a different perspective. Because that word ayelet could also represent not only the heart of the one who's crying out, but it could also represent the heart of the Father. So listen to Psalms chapter 42 from the other perspective, and that of the Father crying out for us as the deer as the deer, as, the, as Yahweh himself longs for brooks of water, so my soul longs for you. In other words, he's looking at us, his word, his brooks of water, his word made manifest, his word made flesh. And he's crying out the same thing to us, that my soul is longing out for you and the connection to you. Well, why, you know, I know we may ask the question, well, how is it that the father can even say that in the first place? Well, let's kind of take a look at Psalm chapter 22 as a whole, because in the place of where David is crying out here, he's crying out on this place of, of, of what's, what, he, what happens next. So for the conductor on the Ayelet Hashakar, a psalm by David, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me? Why so far from the words of my roar? Now, this is the scripture that I was talking about earlier that, that Yeshua himself cried out on the cross. You know, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why do, why so far from saving me? Why so far from the words of my roar? And you see, when, when, David, when David was crying this, think about the, per, the perspective of where he's, where he's coming from. You know, how many times have we, and I'm, I'm looking at my own, my own life here, how many times have there been situations where I would cry out and say, Father, where are you? Where are you in the midst of this? You know, and I've, and I've begun to wonder, let me just give you guys a quick story. I'm, I will get done with verse, up to verse eight today, but... Um, uh, today, today, like I said, there's just there's, there's a there's a place on my heart that I'm crying out for right at the moment, and so uh, today's a little bit more somber than we we normally are are speaking about, but it's because there's a cry going on right now, and and I'm hearing that cry. I know we all are hearing that cry, and there's a place inside of us that's crying out because we're seeing and hearing of people that are are giving up their life in some cases, because of the, the fear of the things that are coming on in the world. But remember something. I want you to remember something. Every time there has always been a place like this, and throughout all of Scripture, Yahweh has always provided a place for his people. There's always been a land of Goshen. There's always been a place, the ark, and other times where Yahweh, pre well, Yahweh prepared a place for his people in the midst of the things that were going on. So just Please bear that in mind. All right, this is not a this is not a a hard thing in saying that okay we need to fear or something like that. No 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 no. If that's coming across, then I'm coming across in the wrong way. So Father, I establish that the word that's going forth today is the word that we are declaring, and that you have taken care of your people, and we cry out for those that are still crying out to see what you have already given us, to see what you have already provided for all of us, Father that you have given us a place, a land of Goshen, if you will, where there's protection, where there's safety, where there, there is, is, we're being taken care of in the midst of things. Even though like Mary Lou, having been uprooted from where she's from and, and staying in a new place because of the things that are going on. Father, that you have provided and you have, you have taken care of, of, of her and others in this, in this place of the situation. But I, I, I remember when uh, several years ago, this has been quite a few years ago now, but I remember once uh, I remember crying out in this place where I was looking at my age and I was thinking, Father, 
Why am I not doing the things that I know that you have called me to do? Why am I not in this place where, where I felt like that, that I know that you had called me to, but I seem to have, have just totally missed everything. And of course, there was a lot of me that said that through this situation or that situation or somehow, some way I had, I had disqualified myself in, in anything that the father had for me to do. And I remember, I remember sitting in my secret place, which I now, I, I now know is my secret place. This was the first time anything had really happened in this place, but I've got a special place in my house that I will go sometimes. Don't have to all the time because the secret place is within me. And the father told me that, but there, there's also a place that I go sometimes in my home where, where it's, it's just, it's, it's like an open portal there. And always, there's always an open portal. Don't get me wrong. It's just, does that, I don't know if it makes sense or not. It's just, it's just a place of, of where I know that I can go and I can be by myself. And uh, I remember crying out in the Lord that day because I was like, Father, you know what? I don't care. And this is exactly what I said. I don't care if nothing ever happens from this point on. You know, I don't care if, if you never speak to me again. Yeah, I said that. I don't care if you never speak to me again. I don't care if you never do anything for me again. I don't, it did, I, I don't care if those things ever happen ever again, because maybe I've disqualified myself in the midst of, of all these things that are going on. I said, but there's one thing that I do know and there's one thing that I will always hold on to, whether you never speak to me again or not. There's one thing that I will I know, and that you are my God. You have shown me this place where you have saved me and you have taken care of me. You've walked me through situations. And, and I'm, I'm still alive today in thankfulness and graciousness for what you have done. So I will go to my dying breath, praising you as my God, regardless if you ever do anything for me again or not. It's irrelevant. And the moment that I said that, I began to bawl my eyes out because first off, I was freaked out about what I had just said. You know, the fact that I had said, you know, I, I don't care if you never talk to me again. I did care. I did care. It was this place of, of just of saying, you know, Father, I make, I'm making a choice here that that just if you, you know, you know, in a sense, it, it kind of began to make me think about the, the Hebrew, the three Hebrew young men who had, had, had stood before Nebuchadnezzar. Now, it was a different situation, but it reminded me of that same place, you know, where they said, you know, it doesn't matter whether you throw us into the fiery furnace or not. You know, it really doesn't matter because our God is able to be able to take care of us out of this. But if not, but if not, you know, that's kind of what I had there was a but if not moment. You see what I'm saying? And but if not, I will not bow down to your idols. And in my case, I was saying, I will call you my God until my dying breath. Anyway, I, that's just the way that I saw it at that time. So think about this from what I've just got done saying, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me? Why so far from the words of my roar? That was my roar. That was my call. That was my cry. And this place of, of, of a painful cry. Oh my God, I call out by day, but you answer not. And by night, but there is no respite for me. I want to stop right there because I want us to stop and look at this from another perspective here. You know, David is crying out and we know inside of our spirit, minds, we know inside of our hearts that the truth is, is that the father has, is always there. He is always there with us. He is always there beside us. He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So what, what's going on here? Is that, is it that God has left him? Oh, heck no. God never, Yahweh never left David or, or, or David's side or anything. Dave, Yahweh had always been there with and in David from the very beginning. So where's the problem here? Where, where is David crying out from? David's crying out from a place where he's not seeing the father 
maybe because he's turned another direction or he's begun to look at the place of the flesh and the things that are going on inside of the world itself. And in that place, he's not seeing God, not because, not because Yahweh's not there, but because he's in a sense turned his back on being able to see the father in, in everything that he does. And he even goes a little bit farther when he says this. He says, yet you are the Holy One. You are Kadosh. Enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you trusted have our fathers. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried out and they were rescued. They trusted in you and were not shamed. So he begins to remind himself of, of his forefathers and those that had trusted in the father, those that had, had, had realized that, that, that Yahweh had carried them through, but he turns right back around. He says, but I am a worm and not a man, a scorn of humanity, despised of people. All who see me deride me. They open wide with their lip. They shake their head. If one commits to Hashem, he will deliver him. If one commits himself to Hashem, to Yahweh, he will deliver him. Now I want to stop right there. Because in this place that, that Yahweh has... has uh, Father, I hear a cry today. Let me just let me just go with what I'm sensing in my, inside of my spirit. And so if you guys will pray with me. Father, I, I, my heart is crying out. There's so many things that are going on in the world right now, and, and, and yet you've given us a place of realizing that we are protected, we are full, we are safe in you. We, we, we have your peace, your shalom. That, that, that rests inside of us. As a matter of fact, I've, I've, there's one thing that, that when I talk to people that are in, in tough situations, there's one thing that I keep talking about over and over and over again, and that is find your place of peace. Once you find that peace, grab a hold and don't let go. Now, I know this is, 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 this is not actually far from, from what David is crying out for here, because, you know, David is crying out in, in, in a way, kind of feeling sorry for himself. Now, that wasn't the case with Yeshua when he was crying this. I don't believe that. I don't believe that he was, he was saying that. But yet at the same breath, there was a cry realizing that, that the father had to, the, the, the judgment of the sin of the world was upon Yeshua himself, even the, though he himself knew no sin. And, and that that judgment was being executed upon him, but it would bring about a finality and a connection back to the father that, that we still really are exploring I think that 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 we've kind of lost sight to a certain extent, but oh, I don't know. I do know. I do know exactly what I'm saying here. I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to get across today. And I hope by the by the the passion of what I have inside of my spirit ran right now that that the Father, that Holy Ghost, you are the one that is is the the one who is teaching. You're the one who is, is declaring and speaking here. Give me the words to say as I begin to, to speak and to declare what I'm hearing you say right now. But there's two things that I've said, not only grabbing a hold of peace, but grabbing a hold of the goodness of the Lord. As Yahweh begins to give you a, a picture of his goodness, as he begins to reveal the depth of his goodness, I want you to be just like that. I want you to grab a hold of his goodness and not let go. You see, it's funny because there is, there's a violence in peace and there's a violence in his goodness. Now, what do I mean by that? You're like, wait a minute, the the, that, that doesn't sound right. You're talking about violence like fighting and beating up somebody? Well, no. Yes. No. Maybe. No. Yes. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> because the, the truth is, is that, that 
Now, I'm not talking about fighting somebody in the sense of fighting them for for the the place of of uh, of, 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 a, of a selfish desire. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being violent in the peace of the Father. In other words, there are times that that I know in my own life where I have had to stop, and in the middle of a of a, of a massive amount of turmoil, said, "I will have peace." I will not let go of the one who I know has saved me from all of this. My body and my flesh are crying. And in a sense, there's this ripping away of my flesh and there's this, this crucifying of my flesh because the scripture talks about us being uh, us crucifying our flesh daily. And that's painful. It hurts. And there's a violence that is needed in order to rip away that flesh. But as we rip away that flesh, then the, 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 the peace of Almighty Yahweh is able to shine through us. The goodness of the Father is able to shine through. The light of the Father is shining through us in the place of that, that, vet, that renting of the veil of our flesh. And yeah, there is a certain amount of violence in the midst of that of saying, I refuse to let go. I will not be moved. You know, the scripture talks about this anyway. The, the, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And I know there's many different ways of looking at this particular scripture, but this is one that I always uh, uh, bring it back to. Father, this is the place where I want to be violent. I want to be violent about your peace. Now, I don't want to be violent to others, I don't want to be violent, destroy others. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not my perspective. I want to be violent in the place where I want to be so ingrained into your peace, so grab, grabbing the hold of it so much that no matter what's going on, even though a violent wind wrap around me, I'm going to grab a hold of your peace and I'm not letting go. It's just like the Hebrew boy, the Hebrew, the, the Hebrew men that went to the, the fiery furnace. They grabbed a hold of the peace of the Father and said, we're not going to let go. And even if you do burn us up in the, the fire and we are consumed, we're still not going to, to bow to your gods. We're still not going to bow to you, period. No, no if, ands, or buts about this. Peace and his goodness are two words that I keep seeing over and over and over again. The peace of the Father, the goodness of Yahweh. Father, we rest in you. We rest in this place of where you are our God, no matter what goes on. No matter what's happening on or around us, Father, you are our God. You are our King. Father, just as the deer longs for the brooks of water, our soul longs in that connection with you. That, Father, even in the midst of times when we, we feel like you're not there, you're always there. Never let me forget. Never let us forget the place of of, of what you have given us, and that is to be one with you. Your scripture says in John 17 that, Father, that they may be one as you and I are one, us and them and them and us. Now, I know, Yeshua, that it was your cry, and your cry was to be able to see us together, operating together as one, operating the echad, operating as yachad. Now, what does that mean? Echad is the Hebrew word for one, and it goes along with the scripture that we all know well. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. We are one in him. But Echad is one part of that. There's another part, the Yachad. The Yachad is how we work together with him. We're operating together as one. You see, the Vav is the, is the Hebrew letter that connects the heavens and the earth. And in that place of the, of the Vav, that connection between the heaven and earth, there's a conduit directly into the place of, of, from the Father into us. There's a ladder, if you will, for us to be able to ascend and to be able to descend in that place of the, of the living letter Vav. But the living letter Vav also 
represents man. It represents us. And we are that connection between heaven and earth. We are the ones that choose to set ourselves up, to look from the place of the up here, to, to be able to declare and decree from the place of the up here and establish it here on the earth. You see, the, the, the earth is crying out for the revealing of the sons of God. And for quite some time now, I have been declaring because I heard it without, with, a, with, a, with a certainty as, as any certain thing that I have ever heard before. The sons are revealed. The sons are revealed. The sons are establishing now the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh on this earth. We are establishing the place of the of the of of, of, of Rabbi Katsa, the, the Malchut, the kingdom of Almighty Yahweh here on this earth. And in in that place, then then the the Father is connecting us. He's giving us this place. You know, I, I don't. I, I, I keep I keep hearing Holy Spirit go to Revelations and. And, and, you know, one of the ways that we've seen revelations, I don't want to get too much into the eschatology of all of this, but, but one of the ways that we've seen revelations is, is in a future event. And that is one way we could see that potentially. And I'm not negating the fact that whether it could or could be, I could be wrong in my aspect of this. But I see something more. I see something deeper. I see something in the place where the Father is saying that the kingdom of God is within you. And if the kingdom of God is within me, there is a place inside of me where the light never stops shining. The light of my father is able to emanate from that place. You see what I'm saying? You see, quite a few, quite a few years ago, he always spoke to me about renting of the veil of the flesh. And there's a scripture in Hebrew where it talks about that, that, that brethren, we now have boldness to enter into the holy of holies by a new and living way. And that is to say his flesh. It's talking about us being able to enter into the very holy of holies inside of the kingdom of almighty Yahweh through his flesh. And when Yahweh began to, to show me that, he immediately turned it around and he said, he looked to me and he said, Yeshua is inside of you. And I asked this question of the father as soon as I saw this, because it, he, for, for many, many years now, Yahweh has, has taken the scriptures and, and always turned them back on me and said, well, how does this apply to you? Because see, if I can't find a connection on how a particular scripture applies to me, then how can I ever meet the standard or how can I ever to can, can ever even think that I can uh, connect with a scripture? If I, if I look at a scripture and say that, oh, that was because of Yeshua and only Yeshua, then, then it separates him from me. When yet the scripture also says that Yeshua paved a way for us and the things that he went through that and the things that he did we would do even greater things than he did while he was on the earth so i mean there's there, there it seems like the schizophrenic way of of looking at things based on the way that we were we were thinking that it separated us from the father it separated us from being able to put ourselves into the the shoes if you will of yeshua yet paul talks about crucifying your flesh daily and crucifying ourselves, that I have to bear my cross and bear that burden and 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 crucify on that cross daily. So there's a and there's and there's another place. I've, Therefore, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Right. So there's this place over and over and over again, where it talks about us being in connection with that. So if that's the case, if there is a new and living way for the light of the Father and the path that Yeshua Himself made by opening up not only the veil of his own flesh, but also renting the veil of the, of the, of the temple, the, the place of the Holy of Holies, then there is a veil over my flesh that also needs to be rent. Because I asked the Father, I said, I said, Father, the, why is it that we don't see the light 
that we need to in the earth? Why is it that we're not seeing the fullness of, of, of what Yeshua did on the cross? If, if the way I've always learned it before was true, then that should have opened up a light that changed everything. Why is there, why does, why does there a veil seem to remain? And that's when the father looked at me and he said, that the only veils that remain were the veils that are in my own flesh. And those veils are veils that I put up. Veils of religion that set up and said, oh, Father, you can't work through that direction because other people have told me and and da 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 has told me that you can't come in that direction because that's that's not right. How can you how can you come in that direction? That's an evil thing. And yet the father himself is 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 walking through sometimes in the midst of of what appears to be a turmoil. And yet there's treasure hidden inside of the very center of what appears to be turmoil. Does that make sense? Oh, you can't come and take care of me in the midst of all this worldly things that are going on. There's no way. And I, I veil off the place of the father being able to, to do something in me because I counted the treasure that was hidden behind that as little or nothing because I looked at the exterior of it. Does that make sense? And I think that's what was going on with David. He was looking at the exterior of things and the things, the enemies coming against him. And he looking at the place where, why have you forsaken me, oh God? Why have you, you pushed me aside in, in the midst of all of this? And the father said, I'm here the whole time. And as we go on through chapter, Psalms chapter 22, we'll begin to see that, that, that there is an opening of this. Now, I've, I've got a good friend of mine who's going through a really rough situation right at the moment. And the other day I was meditating on this. And I'm really looking forward to over the next couple of weeks and as Yahweh begins to, to reveal this, because I heard the father say this specifically. He said, I want you to look at Psalms chapters 22, 23, and 24 as a single chapter. So if you will, if there's any one thing, today's, today's class may be a little bit short. I want the time to engage with, with you guys, but... And I, and, and I believe that the, the Father has, has spoken when he needs to, to speak here. But if you will, I want us to, over the next couple of weeks, especially as we move in through the rest of Psalms 22 into 23 and 24, I want you to look at them as a single chapter. David in Psalm 22 crying out for, why have you forsaken me? But then he walks into Psalms chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have no defects. And then he walks over into Psalms chapter four. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. You see what I'm saying? So as we're going through this, I, I, I want to, to leave you guys with a little bit of homework, if you will. And that is, let's look at all of these as a whole and the process that David himself is going through as he begins to realize, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm looking from the wrong direction. I'm looking from the from from a perspective of the fact that that it looks like that God that 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 you're not there. Every time I cry out, you're not there. I look back at my ancestors; you've always were there for them. Why not me? But that's what he's saying here in Psalms chapter twenty-two, verses one through eight. Why not me? Where who am I in the midst of all of this? But there's more to come. There's the place of the promise, and there's a place of the realization. You see, there's been a place where, where Yahweh had, uh, had reminded me. When, I, when he first took me into the, the secret place, he took me to a place of darkness, and I couldn't see even my nose in front of my face. And, uh, but I felt this gentle breeze that was blowing against, against me. And I remember the, having an opportunity for fear when, when that happened, because it was so dark, I couldn't tell what or if anything was around me. But I've, I've, the, when, when fear showed up, it showed up kind of like a, a, one of those little monsters that was underneath my bed when I was five. You know, So fear showed up as this little tiny monster that when I looked at it, it was like, whatever. And because and the silliness of fear, I love it because when I look back at that now, I'm thinking, 
why had I ever, why did I ever think fear had such a hold on me? Because as Yahweh was taking me into an encounter with him, he showed me what fear was really like. This little tiny fake little monster that almost was cartoony try, coming up to me and, and trying to scare me. Get out of here. You know what I'm saying? It was simple at that point when, when I knew that I was in him because there was one overriding theme that, that was going on at that time. I knew I was in the Father. Even though I couldn't tell what was going on, Yahweh was doing something with me. I didn't know what, but I knew he was doing something with me. And I remember looking down at my chest, and when I did, there was a fire that began to grow. There's a whole lot more to this story that I'm, I'm just cutting through because I'm trying to get to one point of it. But there was a fire that began to, to grow inside of my heart. And as it grew, it began to fill up my chest, it began to fill up my arms, it began to fill up my legs, and then it moved on up into my head. And I looked and I could see that this fire was completely consuming everything inside of me. Now, the fire itself was not protruding from my skin. It was all contained within my skin. But there was a place of, of if you will, a reforming, a refiner's fire on the inside of me. Funny, I've never said that before. I have never said that before until just now. It was like a refiner's fire on the inside. And that's where it began was on the inside of me. But I also noticed something else at the same time, because as that fire began to grow, I noticed that I could look uh, around me and I could start to see some things that were uh, around me. So in other words, I could tell now that I was actually standing on a floor but the floor was very, very dark and black and everything else was still black around me. There was just like a bubble of light that as far as the light inside of me could extend, I could see. And I noticed a little tiny sparkle that, that showed up on the right-hand side of, of where I was standing. So I walked over to it, knelt down and picked up this beautiful sapphire stone. Now it was a round sapphire stone, similar to, to this diamond here about this actually it was maybe a little bit bigger than this but it looked just just like this except blue and it was one of the most beautiful deepest blues that i could have ever imagined and so the moment that i saw this i began to think wow father in the middle of everything that's going on right now in the middle of this darkness you're showing me a treasure and so i immediately did this i said father i want to give you this treasure and I lifted it back up to him as first fruits. It reminded me of the place of the first fruit offerings. I said, Father, I give this treasure back to you. And he looked at me and he says, no, this belongs to you. He said, as a matter of fact, look again. And as I did, I began to scan around where I was at and I could see sparkles everywhere. See, I realized that it was the intention of, of stepping aside to see what this, what this little sparkle was that I was seeing out of the corner, the, the, the right side of my eye. It was the intention of my heart to go find out what that was when the father began to reveal to me even further. Sounds an awful lot like Moshe when he stepped aside because he saw the, the, the burning bush. It was his intent to go see what this thing was because he could see that the fire was consuming, fire, excuse me, the fire was burning in the bush, but it was not consuming the bush. And it was then after his intention was known, after the intent of his heart, then the Lord said, take your shoes off because where you're standing is holy ground. <coughs> and the same thing was true with, with the sapphires for me. And I heard the father say this, he says, I want you to come back here as often as you think about this. And I want you to come in, I want you to pick up these sapphire stones. I want you to build a structure that, I'm want, uh, that I want you to build. And he gave me the plans and the way to build the structure using these sapphire stones. So literally over the next several weeks, probably not, it probably wasn't any more than, than a few weeks, but there was several weeks that I would, anytime that I would think about the place of this, because I would, it was one of those things that it was such a beautiful encounter that, that I wanted to go back. So whenever I had the opportunity, I would close my eyes, I would go back to that place and I would go pick up the sapphire stones and then lay them in the pattern that the father had, uh, had told me to lay them in. Well, one day, not long after that, uh, not, not, 
in the middle of all that going on, the middle of me going and picking these up, one day I began to meditate on, on what the father had done. And that first thought that I had had, the moment that I saw the first sapphire stone, because there was a thought in case that came up inside of my spirit, man, that I was like, huh, you're showing me treasure in the midst of darkness. And then later on, it came back and I was like, wait a minute. How many times have I been in darkness before? And you've always shown me a treasure on the other side of that darkness. And I began to think, I went back in my, in my, uh, in my heart, similar to what David did. Now, David was going back and saying, well, you were there for, for, my, for my ancestors. You were there for my fathers. You know, why aren't you here for me? Well, I did the same thing, but not in the sense of that. I went back and thought about that, that, that place of where I had been in dark, rough situations. And as I meditated on through that process of what was going on, I realized that, that the father was walking me through a situation to, to begin to reveal something inside of me that could then be removed from me. Some wrong thinking, some wrong ways of seeing things, some wrong ways of doing things. And as I did, and as I was willing to, to be able to, to let these things go, there was always a treasure there that had been really hidden from the very beginning. It just may have taken me a long time, and in some cases, a really long time, to be able to find that treasure. Because I, 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 I was almost denying the fact that there was a treasure even there in the first place. And that's when the first time that, that Yahweh began to speak to me, and I said, if that's the case, then why have I ever looked at problems as being problems, Father? Why have I ever looked at situations as being, as being a problem or something that I have to overcome? Why can't I look at everything that happens in every situation and know that you've provided a treasure right there? Because in the midst of no matter what's going on, I don't have to look at it as a problem. I don't have to look at it as a as, a, as an issue or pain or so, any of those things, I can look at it from the place of father. This is a treasure hunt. This is a place where now I'm changing my attitude to look for the treasure that you've hidden there. Don't let me keep looking at the problems over and over and over again. Let me find the treasure. Let me search for your treasure. I don't want to look at the outside of, a, of an oyster shell and discount the, the, the what's inside of that oyster as being little or nothing because I'm looking at the outside of the oyster shell, the horny kind of rough exterior of everything. Because the moment that that oyster shell is cracked open, there's a pearl of great price hidden inside of that that was always there from the very beginning, regardless of the rough exterior. Do you see where I'm going with this? You see, this is what David was dealing with right now. He was dealing with the, the rough situation on the outside, and his, and his mind had been focused on just that, the rough exterior of things that were going on. But there was a treasure hidden from the very beginning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your word today. And as we, as Father, we move into this place of engagement together, let us, let us look at this. Let us begin to change our words. Let us begin to speak the place of the, of, of the treasure that you have given us, the treasure of your word, the treasure of your love, the treasure of your grace, your mercy that you have given to us, Father. And above all, the treasure of your love, above all else, the, the treasure of your wisdom, your understanding, Father, your counsel, your might. Lord, the knowledge of knowing who you are, and yes, especially the fear of the Lord, the awe of you, Father. You are our ultimate treasure. You are the one that our hearts are crying out for. And Father, we thank you that we see you in this place. It doesn't matter if it's only just a glimpse. That's all we need is just a glimpse. But Father, we see you. We see your love. We see your care. We see you. Almighty Yahweh. We see you.
Thank you, Father. Anybody have anything that you want to share before we uh, turn off the recording? Anything that you guys want to uh, add to this? I hate we lost Andrea. If not, I'll go ahead and stop the recording. All right. Love you guys. We will see you next week.